Hey everybody, welcome back to Never Ending DIY channel. Uh, today's project is a 2001 Dodge Ram 1500. This is the 5.2 liter. Uh, the last time this truck was in the shop was not even four days ago. And we put on that hitch right there. Uh, it looks great. But when we were down there, we noticed that the passenger wheel cylinder was leaking brake fluid. Uh, it looked like it was all rusted and corroded. And not even 24 hours, she was calling me saying uh, that the brake brakes went all the way to the floor. Uh, it blew it out. So today uh, and tomorrow, we are going to be doing a slurry of things. We are replacing all the brake lines in the rear end, uh, both left and right, up to the junction. Uh, we're doing two new wheel cylinders because I imagine that they're just rusted to pieces. I got all the hardware for the drums back there. We're gonna do an oil change, air filter change. Uh, you're gonna need a few things when doing this project. Pipe bender, pipe cutter, flare tool, tube nut assortment. I've got a couple other little, you know, I got a, got a junction in here if that's all rusted, but um, we're gonna go ahead and get started, get the rear end back up in the air, uh, make sure she's safe and secure because we're gonna spend a lot of time under there today. We got the truck up in the air, we got the wheels off, gives us full access. Um, I still put cardboard down because I don't like rolling around in the dirt, even on a concrete floor. So, I already snipped this. Uh, what I did is I just got a pair of side cutters and cut that off because we're going to replace the entire wheel cylinder. And so that whole unit's coming out. So I don't even have to worry about that. Um, I cut it as close as I could because we still want to preserve the line because the line's going to give us all our shape. And I came all the way back to here. This one was equally as corroded. Uh, here's the junction box right here soft line coming in and then this line is going out to the driver's side uh, wheel cylinder so I nipped it off here and then I can just take a deep so deep well socket and uh, put it on this and try and back it off little penetrating little PB blaster um, but like I said you know we're gonna do wheel cylinders on both sides we're gonna replace all these brake lines I'm gonna go up I'm gonna inspect all the brake lines and uh, the frame rail and make sure they're not too terribly corroded and uh, and yeah so uh, I'm going to work on getting this, this brake line backed off of here, and then we're going to bend a new one uh, and make sure that it matches and that it fits, and uh, we're going to clean up this junction and put all of our new parts on. So as you can see, all I did is I took the new pipe and the old pipe, and I did everything I could to line them up. It might be a little bit longer, then the other one, I've still got to put my end caps on here and, and, and flare these out, and we'll show you how that works here in a, in a minute. But um, I'd rather have a little bit too much and then you know be able to sway this bend out and secure it to the frame than not have enough and not be able to reach. So uh, it might be a little, probably a touch bit long on each side, but I'm kind of erring on the side of caution. I might trim it back just a tick, but... Um, it should match or be pretty darn close by the time you're done. All right, y'all, I'm gonna show you how I do this. Um, I'm just gonna use a little little end piece as an example. Before you before you put your before you put your tubing on, uh, you want to make sure that you you run your fitting on there. And uh, we're not gonna do both sides, so I mean this will just come out. But um, when you're putting your whole line together, obviously before I before I do the real thing, we're gonna want to take this and slide it right over that and then start our procedures. So sort of the real key to this operation is making sure that you've got the right amount exposed and that you're nice and flat. Because if you're not nice and flat, your flare is gonna be all cattywampus. And the way I do that is I take this Set it right on top and run that to the end. So now I'm flush. We're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. You ain't gotta kill it, just gotta be good and tight. Step one, that little guy's gonna go in there. Step two. This is where we're gonna double check and we're gonna make sure we are nice and plumb because if you're not you're gonna be very disappointed with your results and you're not gonna have a good seal so we look good we 
we're just going to get it until it goes all the way down. Okay, we're touching. That's it. That's all we need to do. Okay, so now we're going to remove this. This is now bell shaped. This guy is now going to go in here. And again, make sure you are nice and straight up and down. We're going to run this down until it seats. That's it. Nice and tight. Not so tight that you're going to damage anything. And this here. It's a nice double flay right there. This little guy goes right on there, and I can see everybody fits really nicely. Once that goes in, that's going to create a really, really nice seal. Here's your drum. That slides right off. It will not slide off if your emergency brake is on, though, because this will be extended. Brake pads, master sil or wheel cylinders right in here. So we're going to actually need to disassemble all this, take all the springs off. All this is going to get disassembled, and then the wheel cylinder is actually held on. There's two bolts right back behind here. So we're going to take that wheel cylinder out, put a new one in, back it on there, and uh, that'll be that. We'll do that on both sides. Okay, so we knocked the wheel cylinder off. We took all, we took all the hardware and everything off of there. A lot of it is rusted and corroded, so we are going to change all that out. Um, we're going to clean up this hole uh, so that way it's nice and clean and there's no corrosion. We're going to take a wire brush to that. Um, I've got the old wheel cylinder out, the new wheel cylinder right here. You want to make sure that you put the right one. These are directional, so left and right side, it does matter. Um, you can see on the back here uh, where that yellow plug is, that's where our brake line is going to go in. So just, just make sure you're, you're putting the right side on the right side, otherwise you're going to be really bummed out when you go to connect everything back together. Uh, typically does not come with these, these hammers, uh, these plungers that come off the side of the wheel cylinder. So we're going to take these out and uh, we're going to clean them up really nice and make sure that we're not putting anything dirty and anything new. Ooh, shiny. I forgot to mention, these things do pop right out of that wheel cylinder, just pop right in. You might put, need to put a little bit of grease around here to get it into the new boot, but um, they literally just float in there. So our new wheel cylinder is in, all polished up, all these surfaces have been cleaned up. One of the things I just decided, because I'm having flashbacks to a, a previous job, I'm not going to put this back together until I get my brake lines run. Uh, and the reason being, sometimes when, when you're trying to get that brake line to fit right in there, sometimes it's off just by a little bit. And having the ability to back these bolts out right here, these half inch bolts, having the ability to back those out and just kind of turn your wheel cylinder a little bit and manipulate it to be able to get that brake line in, that is so critical. Uh, in my opinion, so I'm not going to reassemble until I get the new brake lines run. So the new brake lines are in. Uh, it actually went in a lot easier than some of the vehicles I've had experience on in the past. Uh, and I think that was because we had some nice clean mating surfaces. I had the wheel cylinders loose, uh, so I was able to wiggle those back and forth and get those fittings to tie in really nicely. Now I need to go back and make sure none of my brake lines are touching the rails. Um, I've got a spot up here on the differential that it is touching. And so I'm gonna go back, we're gonna bend a little bit. We're gonna make sure that uh, all of the brackets and whatnot that we pulled off are going back on and that we're not creating rub points because that'll create a new hole. Uh, once that's done, we're going to reassemble the brakes with the new drum hardware uh, and then we are going to put the drums back on and we are going to start bleeding this system. Uh, you know, with all that we've done, there's tons of air in there, so we're going to start at the rear passenger, bleed all the air out of there until we get clean fluid, then we're going to go over to the rear driver and then we're going to bleed all the air out of that until we get clean fluid, then we're going to go up to the front passenger and then to the front driver. You start at the furthest point away from the master cylinder and you work your way back to make sure you get all of the air out of the system. But this job is pretty much complete for what I want to show you. Uh, other than that, we're reassembling, bleeding brakes and putting her back on the ground. So uh, job well done. Thanks for joining me guys. 
Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll be back with never-ending DIY next time. Thanks so much.